Hey everybody, my name is Jim Farmer. I'm the Festival Director of Out on Film. Thanks for joining us today. Um, this is one of our great shorts programs that we have this year. This is our 34th year representing films for, by, and about our community and allies. This is, however, our first hybrid festival. So we have a rather small schedule at the theater this year and a lot of virtual programming for those of you who would rather stay at home. So I'm really, really happy that we have some great filmmakers who are part of the program Finding Your Voice, which is one of my favorite church programs of the year. I'm going to let them all introduce themselves and then we have some questions for our panelists. So who wants to start? Luke, you want to start? Sure. Hi, I'm Luke Willis, and I'm the writer director of Pool Boy, which is a uh, romance starring River Gallo. Okay, great. Heather. Um, Heather and Jake. My name is Heather Mironwin Adeshi. I'm Jake Ladon. Yes, okay. uh, we are the co-directors, and I'm also the writer and lead actor of Ta, uh, T H O, the Horn Accent, uh, the great. first uh, first film about and by an asexual girl of color. Great. And John. Oh, you're muted. Sorry, I'm muted. I, um, I'm sorry. I, I, I just want to make sure it's Taffy. Taffy, is it Taffy or Curtis that's in, out on film? I've, I have two very similar films. I was double checking. It's, is, it, is it Taffy or Curtis? Let me just double check the name of the film. Um, Curtis. Sorry, I haven't Curtis. Yeah, Curtis. Curtis. Yes. All right, sorry, I haven't no slept. It's been crazy. So I'll it's, it's tell you nice why. To, it's nice to be so popular. To have films uh, everywhere. So no, I'll tell you why I got confused. It's because um, so the name of the film is Curtis, and it's based. Uh, it's an interview. It's a documentary interview with yeah. an actor that I made a short film called Taffy with. So uh, it's called um, Curtis, and it's an, a documentary interview. It's a portrait of uh, an actor named Curtis. Nice. Thank you all for joining us. What I love about this program is that it's a great, it's a great program, but the films are so diverse. And I don't know if you've had a chance to, I mean, I don't know if you know any other filmmakers here, if you've seen any other films, but you know, I, I would love you all to watch the program because it's really, really strong. So anyway, well, let, let's start with you, John. I mean, just tell us a little bit about your film, you know, why you decided to make it and, you know, funding and how difficult it was to make. Sure. Absolutely. So um, I was a resident at Crosstown Arts in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I was there, I thought it'd be interesting. I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas. So I thought okay. I'd uh, leverage some of my friends in Little Rock and help uh, them. And they came and gave Mahan, my DP, and who's one of the mm -hmm. producers on the project, came uh, with some equipment. And mm -hmm. he's been my DP for a very long time. And we um, set up shop at Crosstown and had uh, different uh, people from the queer community just come in and share their stories. That was all I really wanted to do was kind of just let anybody that wanted to share their story, share their story and get a big uh, cross section of different stories and just give a place to speak for that time. And so Curtis was an actor or is an actor in Memphis that I met uh, at different like theater gatherings and things. And I um, would have cast him for this short film called Taffy. And through the rehearsal, I was like, you know, it'd be interesting if, uh, we just did an interview with you. Like, would you do my little interview project? And so he sat down and gave this amazing interview about his life and growing up in Louisiana and being in the military and uh, his uh, his journey kind of through life. And so I thought um, it was a very special interview and I wanted to share it with uh, the rest of America and the world. And I thought, you know, out on film would be a fantastic place for it. Um, and well, I was you. super thrilled, sure. super thrilled when I heard about uh, it playing there. So thanks so much. Thanks so much. Premiering there, actually, I was going to say premiering. Oh, there. Okay. I didn't realize that, but we'll, we'll definitely promote that. I didn't realize that. That's great news. Heather yeah. and Jake. Oh, okay. oh yeah, that's us. <laughs> yeah, so um, I uh, created Ta and uh, brought Jake along to be my partner in it um, okay. because I want to reclaim my story um, as an asexual girl of color. Um, the, we created the film about like three months after the events of the film happened. Mm -hmm. um, that's my way of kind of um, reclaiming ownership over my story, my body, and my sexuality um, after being in toxic romances where partners were trying to prove me wrong. Um, we didn't believe that asexuality really existed and 
thought that if I had sex more, then that would mean that I was suddenly straight and like sexual, but mm-hmm. that caused a lot of uh, trauma. Uh, and was why the way that I wanted to kind of rebuild the world was through vibrant colors and like glitter that uh, represented the trauma that different partners kind of like pass on to each other. Um, okay. And it was really uh, just like a really cool project to kind of um, introduce some people to asexuality if they're unfamiliar and also for folks who are asexual or questioning whether they're ace, um, potentially seeing themselves on screen and being like, hey, I'm not alone. And um, there are stories that we can tell and we can tell more of our stories um, with asexual characters written by sexual characters, played by sexual characters, rather than uh, being misrepresented by people who don't really understand the experience and just kind of see it as like an interesting obstacle to like portray. Okay. Thank you. And Luke? Yeah, so, um, you know, the, uh, my my original idea for Pool Boy came to me in June of 2020. And it was sort of something that rose out of the ashes of several canceled productions. I had a grant for one of those productions that I was still able to use. And I thought, how can I use this grant to make something that is COVID safe? That is an important story to tell right now. And, you know, something that people need. And I, as I meditated on that, I thought in that moment that we were in, in the summer of 2020, there was so much anger and frustration and conflict and everyone, even those of us that get it, have 100% agree on all views and issues, somehow we're managing to fight with one another and to be upset with one another. And I thought we desperately need a film that is hopeful and healing, that is simple, that isn't, you know, sometimes art serves as a mirror uh, to say how, how things are. And yeah. sometimes art can serve as a roadmap to say, hey, this is how we can make it better. These are the decisions we can, we can choose to make to, to do things better. And so I think that this story arose out of a desire to write a love letter to the trans community to say that you are perfect as you are. You don't need to change. It's, mm-hmm. the, it's, it's those closeted, um, in this instance, those closeted um, he hems, those closeted boys that need to just be okay uh, accepting their full range of attraction, right? That like be, being attracted to a trans feminine person or even a non-binary person doesn't make you less straight. It just means that you have more inside you than, than that box that boxes us all in really. So that's, right. that's my place and starting point for Pool Boy. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask all of you briefly, I mean, so where where are you in your filmmaking career? I mean, is this one of your first films? Have you been making films for a long time? Just talk to us again a little bit about your professional career. We'll start with, we'll start with Luke. Sure, yeah. So I, um, let's see, I retired from, I was a, I was a classical ballet dancer first and then I, uh, for all of my 20s and I retired from that when I was 32 in 2014 and okay. went back to, Cool. And I did that after making what could be considered my first short film. And that was 2013. Um, and I went to film school. I made a ton of short films in film school. Some of them have been seen by the world. Some of them have not and hope never will be. Um, but I will say that on, in terms of like, you know, real, really getting my films out there, this is my second short film really getting out there. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I'm really happy to share it with the world, and I'm, I feel like I'm in a place where I'm, I've got several features in development, and I'm really excited to, I really hope that that's my next endeavor, so. Nice. Congratulations. Jake and Heather. Um, I, so this was our first project together. Uh, we kind of, uh, I was approached by Heather because I had been working on a couple things, and she reached out to me, and we met. Uh, and decided to collaborate on this. And it worked really well, as you can see, by us being here. Um, and so since then, we've taken uh, further steps and we are we have another short film in post-production right now. And we've got uh, a couple more things uh, in development. So yeah, it was, yeah, the start of something. Yeah, this is nice. also my first film. Uh, nice. so exactly. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, it definitely sets the bar and standard. Like we had an intimacy coordinator on set to make sure that everything was safe for the actors. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and yes, <laughs> and making sure that um, we really honed in on the the point that consent can be taken away or given at any time, um, and that really set the bar for all the other films that we make. Sure. And John. Yeah, I've made. Uh, I guess I made a lot of films actually. Uh, I started my first feature doc back in like 2005. It was about, uh, it's called Pink Houses, about two gay men in Conway, Arkansas during Huckabee, uh, Governor Huckabee's reign, putting on their first uh, gay pride parade in Conway. So that was my first film back in 2005. I think it was a Stonewall Award winner back then. And um, yeah, so from then on, I've made probably about a dozen short films and um, then a couple feature docs and things. So this is my, this is my, uh, first little portrait, I guess, this is my first uh, series of portraits. And I'm excited to kind of be part of the, kind of exploring what the portrait series could look like and getting to meet people and allow them to tell their own story. Cause up to this point, I've been doing a lot more fiction work. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's nice to kind of get myself out of the way and just share their own, own story. And okay. um, it's been, it's been education for sure. It's definitely been fun. Nice. We're, we're known as a festival that programs a lot of short films because I, I love short films. But one of, the, one of the challenges we always have is where to put things. And I was having this conversation with filmmakers yesterday about, you know, how do you decide where to put a film? You know, I mean, some films, you know, like we have like a horror blog, those speak for itself. Sometimes films that are very funny, those are easy comedy. But other films you have to say, where do I put this? And, and what I like about all three of your films is that they just feel very authentic in voice. And that's why I put this in finding your voice. But can you just talk about, because they, I just, all three of these just feel incredibly authentic in terms of the people who are there. And it's a voice that, you know, I'm, I might not have heard, you know, every, every I just don't hear that often. But just to talk a little bit about having an authentic voice in your film. We'll start with, uh, let's start with Heather and Jake. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh... I would say, I think that's probably one of the biggest strengths of this film. Yeah. And uh, a big approach that we took going into the process was um, how can we tell this story in a way that everyone will understand? Sure. Um, and, and we'll put it into context for people who've never been exposed to this kind of uh, uh, events or, or material before so that when they watch the film, they'll feel you know, the message and they'll feel the author's voice and they'll understand uh, what it is that we're trying to say. And so um, that means a lot, thank you, because uh, <laughs> it was what we were trying to do. Uh, and, uh, and I agree, I think that this, as, as a result of our work, it is uh, very authentically Heather. You know, it was very important, like in the editing process too, because like when we kind of had our first assembly cut, it had all the events that were based on real life and also just kind of like also in a magical realist, hyper realist way that we uh, really wanted to accentuate but then it didn't quite feel the way that it felt to be in those events. So it was really important to edit everything until I like each scene is edited to the point that when I watched it, it made me feel the feelings that I had when I had the experiences. Um, okay. Because for some reason, it was really important to me to like, hey, make it as authentic and raw as possible. Um, sure. And the fear was other folks who resonated with this, those experiences to be re-traumatized, but based off the audiences that we've talked with, they're like, no, we like feel seen, but we don't feel re-traumatized. And I was like, perfect, okay, because <laughs> okay. I don't want to perpetuate that, but also want, um, want folks to feel that they are understood and also can tell that story. Okay, John. Um, I think partly I think that for me, there's a lot of times I've been mostly around gay men or mostly around a certain group of uh, queer culture. And so getting to make a series where I got to interview many different types of people from our alphabet was uh, really helpful. It became much more inclusive. I started seeing all the equity and just hearing everybody's stories. and. Um, I think one of the things I liked about the series was was we had a very diverse group of queer people. And mm -hmm. I think uh, that for me was something I, I wanted to try to take on as a, a, and one of the reasons I wanted to try a series. 
And initially we were trying to just write them as monologues. I was going to hire actors and write monologues. And then I just started talking to people I'm like, oh, I'll, just, I'll just record you. <laughs> like, so, so it became, um, uh, so that's, that was my goal. I guess that's what I've, one of the things I've liked the most about it is, is being, um, trying to get more diverse and, and uh, equitable um, identities. I will say Curtis knows how to tell a story. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. he's, a, he's a master yeah. storyteller. I mean, we all we all saw this like, wow, we love this. Luke. Yeah, um, I I would have to say that, you know, the authenticity of our film really has to be credited to just incredibly, um, just incredible performances by the actors. Personally, mm -hmm. I think that that is what really brings this story so, such um, authentic believability and like relatability and you know I do think it was also so important for me that the trans character in writing this that 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 character was representing authenticity representing the the right way to go about living by being authentic with yourself you know there's the there's the scene where the super broy jock dead names them and they're so their response is just so comfortable and stable and like this is who i am i'm not going to be threatened by you okay you being threatened by me and that was really that was really critical to me because i think that so often um trans characters and really you know all the characters in our our community um every letter of the of the community we we often get represent our trauma gets represented and it's always a story about how we have to deal with our trauma and learn to love ourselves and i thought what if just the trans character was just the most authentic person in the film they were the ones living their truest selves and they don't have to change it's the world around them that has to change and i thought that that was really that was really the intention of the film so um so yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it does. And, and again, congratulations on all of you. How did, how would you say that, that COVID did and has affected you as filmmakers? I mean, I, I mean, that's, that's a loaded question, isn't it? But I mean, but let's start with John. I like a lot of different ways, I guess. Um, one is, I think, practicing more like self care in a way. I think before I was always ready to go and do something somewhere and get on a plane and go and shoot and do whatever. And then I've realized over the last near two, new two, near two years now that I like having some structure and I like being home and I like having my dog and I like those parts of my life. So I think I've started changing my projects to be to fit more inside of my like inside inside of doable parameters. Where I can, you know, make sure that all the stress that happens outside of my, like, film set or life, I have the ample time to try and take care of. Do I do it all the time? No, but I think it helped me recenter on uh, trying to put myself before the film a little more and, and okay. recenter on on that part of how I make things. Okay, Luke. Yeah, I think that's beautiful what John said. I would totally echo that. I mean, outside of the logistical constraints and the financial constraints, I mean, certainly COVID has added money and, and energy into planning, but I think it's all positive stuff. You know, I was never a fan of 12 hour days. Uh, and I feel like under COVID 12 hour days are, are becoming more of a no, no. And uh, because it's, you know, it's a about a matter of time. I think that's right. I think there's also some, there's a lot more con like, conscious consent based practices I feel like happening on set now like everything kind of has to we all have to kind of get consent to do anything like shake hands or just be in the same room and um, I think that's all really positive stuff uh, so yeah I mean this this film was shot in COVID and certainly was like a crazy logistical nightmare um, probably the best planned uh, shoot I've ever been a part of and still managed to like blow up at every every step of the way. So. Okay, Heather and Jake. Uh, well, this is a virtual Q and A, uh, so I would say that's probably one of the major ways that it's impacted us. Is, sure. You know, being unable to to go to places and our movement has definitely been restricted, um, and I think that that's sort of the same 
thing when it comes to filmmaking. You have to be really, really uh, careful now and you have to plan everything out. Um, yeah, we, uh, yeah. We, uh, did, we did production of Ta before COVID. Um, and then so all of our post-production happened during COVID. And I think what it really, I think the most significant impact was how we normalized um, co uh, collaborating with like folks all across the world to uh, work on the project with us. Um, I know I personally Skype <laughs> my best friend like since we were kids. So video calls are not something that is really different for me, but it was really cool to be like, oh, like just talk to people that I may not have met otherwise. Yeah, it's, it's weird that our, our circles have gotten much, much bigger uh, because we were forced uh, inside. Okay, yeah. and Luke? Oh, I already went. I'm sorry. Is that, John, did you, you went down, did you? Okay, I'm sorry. I did, yeah. <laughs> so no, it's, yeah, hey, it's, it's one of those, it's a Thursday, it's a hard one. <laughs> and we're opening our festival tonight, so I'm a little. Yeah, you've been busy, you've been busy. <laughs> well, so, John, I know that Curtis is making its premiere here, and, and I'm, I'm very excited about that, but for the others of you, where are you right now in your festival run? Where all have you played and where are you hoping to play later in the year? We'll start with Luke. Sure. Um, we're kind of right in the middle of it. You know, we premiered at BFI Flair in March mm -hmm. and then had a blank period because we hadn't really premiered, pr prepared to premiere there. Um, and then we sort of hit the ground running this summer pretty hard uh, with Outfest and Rhode Island and Woods Hole. And I think we won Best Narrative at Honolulu. Nice. Uh, I think we're playing this week also at Reeling Film Festival in Chicago, Cinema Diverse in Palm Springs. And we just announced this week that we will be part of New Fest in New York City, which is really exciting as well. Um, Gosh, you know, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to announce as well or not. I think we played in Italy this month. I think we're playing in Denmark next month at two different festivals. One very exciting one that I'm, I'm not going to say because I'm not sure I'm allowed to announce okay. yet. Okay. But we also have an Australian premiere coming up in November as well. So it's nice. just a lot of, it. you know, there was a big blank period between BFI and Outfest. And then ever since Outfest, it's just been a really exciting run. Okay. We're really on. Nice. Heather and Jake. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> premiered like online at Outfest Fusion, uh, and then we had our um, in-person, first-in-person screening at Outfest LA. Uh, we were at Cinema Diverse, and we are in um, on film and uh, Viet Film Festival, uh, and then we're going to um, Philadelphia Asian Pacific Film Fest, and then we still have a couple that we're just uh, waiting. World Pride Day. Yeah. Uh, and some other stuff. I, yeah, I also don't know what we're allowed to say. Okay. Uh, but I, yeah, I would say we're, we're more or less right in the middle uh, okay. as well. Mm -hmm. So final question, what, what projects are you working on next? And we'll start with John. Um, I'm trying to get the, the another, another city for my Tell Me a Memory project, which Curtis was a part of. Um, so I'm looking at other cities, trying to figure out how to make that happen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty much, that's, that's my, my personal next project, yeah. Great. Heather and Jake. Uh, I am writing my first feature. Uh, so lot, lots of locked doors. Um, and I've also got a couple of things that are, are kind of in the interview pre-production pre development stage. Uh, and Heather's been really busy. Oh, uh, well, I've been pitching uh, the series adaptation of Ta, as well as um, developing another a pilot for another series that will have all asexual characters as the leads and it's going to be exciting. <laughs> Great. And Luke? Yeah, well, um, aside from trying to get one of my features made, as you know, within the next year, because uh, I have like, I have two written and a third one uh, ready to write. I am currently in San Francisco. I'm in a park right now because I had to step out of um, our, off our set so I can take my mask off for you guys. I am on set this week. We're doing a seven day shoot for a series of videos for a drag queen that I'm really excited about. Um, and I can't say too much else, but um, it'll be all over my socials um, in a few months. So <laughs> hope you will check those out because they're really, really fun projects. Great. Congratulations to all of you. 
the program is finding your voice. It's an amazing program. It's, it's one of our best shorts programs that we have this season. Um, hope you all out there can watch it. Luke, John, Jake, Heather, thank you so much for bringing your film to us this year. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us about the projects. I really appreciate it. And I think our patrons are really gonna love the films this year. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you, you for having us, Jim. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.